What is up everybody, my name is Felix and today I'm going to be bringing a tutorial in FL Studio 12. I'm going to be showing you how to make your kicks and 808s sound punchier with only stock FL Studio plugins. I've seen some tutorials on this uh, because I've been, I was looking it up a while ago for myself because my kicks were starting to sound a lot qu really quiet and muddy and I tried to turn them up but it kind of made the rest of the song quiet or it sounded really distorted or whatever. Um, but all the tutorials I saw were either like just bad tutorials or they were old or uh, they showed you with plugins that you had to like buy or download and that's for me I know that's an inconvenience I don't like searching for these plugins and like doing whatever um, extra stuff that you had to do uh, I like just being able to know what's in the program and then just use that like why not it's a lot easier so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. I have this just kind of sim really simple sample beat that I made. Simple sample. Simple sample beat that I made for you guys. Um, and here, let me reset all this stuff. Okay, so I uh, actually just reset the 808 and kick because I actually had them done already because I filmed this once before. Yeah, I just made this quick little sample beat. I'll play it for you guys. So yeah, that's basically the beat that I have uh, prepared for today that I'm going to be working on with the kick and 808 to make it sound more punchy. And yeah, basically you could hear with the song, it didn't sound very punchy. On my, if you're listening through computer speakers, you might have not even been able to heard the kick and 808 because on my com computer speakers, I definitely did not even hear it. The first thing, actually, I almost forgot, which is the most important thing, I cannot stress this enough, you need to find good samples. Too many times people try to mix and master uh, songs with samples that are just complete crap um, and it just sounds horrible. It doesn't matter how much mixing and mastering and amazing sound engineering work that you do on it, it'll still sound like crap. At the end of the day, if you have crap and try to turn it into diamonds, what do you think is going to happen? It's not going to work. It doesn't matter what kind of uh, advanced technology that you have, what kind of alien technology that you have, it's not going to work. So, what you want to do is you want to find really good samples. Not really good, they just have to be good. A lot of times what you want to do is grab a kick that is like kind of this like woo -woo, wavy pattern. Um, instead of a kick that sounds like this. Let me grab. So as you can see, this kick here is kind of like a smushed together version of the other one. Uh, that's not a good thing. You just want to kind of avoid those. Um, depends on what you're using it for, but... For as far as like manipulating the sound, it's easier to do it when the waves are bigger, I've found. Um, that's not, don't quote me on that, that's not like a scientific thing or whatever. But yeah, that's just what I've found in my experience. So yeah, grab a kick that's like that. And then 808, you can kind of just grab whatever you want. Um, as long as it sounds like good and not horrible. Um, the two drum kits I use for kind of just convenience in this video... Uh, are this XXX Tentacion drum kit and this uh, TM88 Nightmare drum kit. Both of these drum kits can be found on uh, freedrumkits.net, as you can see right in the front there. Um, just download them off there. There's a lot of samples. I like these two drum kits because they have really like uh, unique kind of uh, drum sounds. So yeah, and this one has really good loops. Uh, one of them I used in this. So yeah, I've just been messing around with that, and these two drum kits are fire. Today's topic is these bad boys. So, go into your mixing uh, channels or whatever, um, and you want to go to the kick. This one's the kick here, the second one. And I usually do the kick first. What I do is right-click on this little green uh, button, and it just plays the kick itself. So then you can just hear the kick itself, and then you can click it to toggle it. So, yeah, that's a cool little feature. So, go in. First thing I do is EQ it. First thing I do with everything. So, I'm going to listen to it and EQ it at the same time. So, basically, the thing with mixing uh, is that you want to give everything its own, like, unique place in the mix. That's a way whole other topic. Uh, if you want me to do a tutorial on mixing and mastering, I definitely will. 
but uh, all you need to know basically is that it's just giving everything its place, its own place in the mix. Um, so that's what we're doing now. Uh, what you want to do kind of is just cut out the frequencies that aren't even used so that it's like none slip through and it's just like empty of those frequencies. Uh, it just sounds a lot better, a lot cleaner. So that's what I do. And then I boost the frequencies that the kick has the most of. So it just kind of brings out the good and takes away the bad. So yeah. I just move it in until it sounds decent. And then you want to just, you can even, oh yeah. So how I did this thing, uh, where I went like that and made it like really flat on the bottom is I just took this little, um, dot here and then just click left click and drag it down and then you'll get down all the way and then you just get those four little, uh, em empty, uh, dots. And then you can do it with this one too. And then just bring this boop, all the way down and then it's just all the way out of there. And so you want to just make it to where it doesn't really interfere with interfere with the frequencies that are playing already, but it just um, cuts up the once it doesn't use. And then you want to look and see where the frequencies are playing the most of, and then just boost those a little bit. So there we go. I'll do it like that. And then these frequencies down here, like uh, really lower down here. You can't even hear, like the human ear physically can't even hear those noises, but other animals actually can, um, which is really crazy and mind-blowing to me. Um, but I'll cut those out just because you can hear them anyways. Most people max out around like 18, uh, whatever, hertz or whatever it's called. Um, kilohertz, I think. So it's not using these frequencies anyways. Um, some samples actually use frequencies that we can't even hear. But yeah, so I'm just cutting off. So there we go. Basically, that's how you EQ the kick. Um, obviously, it's different for every single sample because every single sample is different. Um, but you just want to... The main rule is just cut out the frequencies that it doesn't use and then just boost the frequencies that it uses the most. And that's basically what I just did. And so the next thing I usually add is Maximus. And Maximus, funny enough, usually is for the master channel. And so you want to go to kick pump. And then you can actually cut out the high frequencies because it doesn't use high frequencies anyway. So we come out, um, and then you can go into the mid frequencies, and you want to boost up the post a little bit, and then boost the low a little bit, and then it sounds like this. So yeah, obviously, it's sounding a lot punchier now. If you like how it sounds like that, you can obviously just leave it. But there's one more little thing I usually do, and it's just add a soft clipper. Um, I don't really know what a soft clipper, clipper does, to be honest. I don't want to sound unprofessional, but I don't really know what it does. It just kind of distorts stuff and makes it louder. Uh, what I usually do is just bring down threshold, bring up the post, and then, yeah. And then it sounds really punchy after that. So, so yeah, that's basically what I do with the kick. Um, there's other things you can do. You can add a limiter or whatever. Um, but this is just the way I do it. Some people do it differently, but I feel like this is the most effective way with just stock FL Studio plugins. So yeah, now I'll play with the whole song. You can hear it already sounds a lot punchier. That's how you do the uh, mixing on the kick, and you want to just kind of adjust it to how loud you want it to be. I'll bring it down a little bit. And so the next thing we want to move on to is the 808. If you're using uh, just your computer speakers, I would recommend getting headphones, because on my computer speakers, I know I definitely can't hear it, so others, other people may not be able to hear it either. So what I usually do, EQ it. It's just kind of like the same one, uh, same thing as the kick. So you kind of just play it. It's the kind of the same thing as a kick, but except for it uses like way less uh, frequencies in the mid and uh, in the high. So you want to just bring them down like this.
bring it down like that until it kind of just doesn't interfere with the frequencies already playing. And then you want to go like that. Maybe do that. And then we want to go in and boost the frequencies over here. So I kind of just boosted the whole thing a little bit. Um, you can even just kind of go like this. Bring these down a little bit if you want. It's all up to you. Um, so yeah, basically do that. And then I'll go in here and then I'll go to Maximus. The 808's a lot simpler, I find. Um, so Maximus, you don't usually use any uh, presets or anything. Uh, you don't need to. You can just go into the high. And then you boost the mid a little bit, boost the low a little bit. It's a lot louder, so you can turn it down a little bit. There we go. So basically that's what you could do with the um, 808 to make it sound punchier and just a lot louder and hit harder. Basically that's the tutorial done um, it's not as hard as you guys might think uh, in the beginning I was like oh there's so many different tutorials to watch I don't know which one to follow but I think this is a good basis for especially beginners because you can see like how to use just the plugins that you already have like all the sounds that you already have um, and then go from there so yeah I hope you guys uh, were able to learn something from this tutorial I'm glad you guys watched and if you have any suggestions for videos I should make in the future like if you want me to do that mixing and mastering uh, tutorial because I know a lot of people need help with that. Definitely leave a comment below. Don't be shy. And thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.